We all know about using a low-pass filter to create a transition, or a high-pass filter to remove some rumble. But what about getting a bit more creative with filters? In this video, I'll be going over four unique ways you can use filters more creatively in your productions today, such as creating unique ARPs or processing your effects like the pros. But very quickly, if you want to boost your production skills in just 12 weeks, check out our Producer Launchpad program. Whether it be mixing, mastering, sound design, or even marketing, we'll follow you for 12 weeks with your tailor-made program one-on-one -on -one tutoring, weekly modules, and a lot more. If you're interested, just check out the link below to apply. And while you're at it, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button just to let other people know we exist. And with that out of the way now, let's get into it. All right, so what is a filter? Well, this is a high-pass filter. This is a low-pass filter. So I think you already know that. Usually when we talk about EQing, we're talking about something like this. So slightly boosting, slightly removing certain frequencies. Whereas when we talk about filters, we're actually talking about filtering an entire section of frequencies. So in this case, filtering out the low end. You can also filter out specific ranges of frequencies with a notch filter. This is how I think of filters. Now, it's not exactly correct because when we start talking about formant filters, for example, or comb filters, we're not exactly removing entire frequencies like with a high pass filter, but for now, it's good enough. So in this video, I'm not going to explain precisely how a filter works. So I'm not going to go over the cutoff frequency or slope or the resonance or things like that. I don't think I'm going to bring a lot of value explaining what a cue does, for example. What I want to focus on in this video is creative ways to use filters. So what you can do to be a bit more creative is actually automate your cutoff frequencies. So here I have this uh, melodic loop playing. I'm just gonna disable uh, the filter for now and this is what it sounds like. So a nice loop that covers a wide range of frequencies. Now what I'm gonna do is set this to a notch filter. Some EQ plugins might call it a band reject, but the idea is that you remove a whole range of frequencies. So here around 500 Hertz, we're removing everything. What I'm gonna do here is simply play with the frequency, right click here, create automation clip. I'm gonna set this point here to a wave. And now I'm just gonna adjust the amplitude of this effect, maybe play with the resonance as well until I find something I like. <laughs> Let me switch to a bad pass here. So you can play with different types of filters here, different speeds, adjust the cue, and create brand new sounds based on this. Another way I love to use filters is to make my ARPs and melodies more unique and more human sounding. Let me give you a listen to this ARP playing on Vital here. <laughs> It sounds nice, but definitely a bit static. Every node is sounding exactly the same. What I'm gonna do is actually apply an LFO to a filter to make each of these nodes a bit more unique. Let me first set uh, this filter, let's say to a formant filter. If you don't know what a formant filter is, it's basically a filter that imitates vowels from the human voice. That's why you see the letters A, O, I, E here. So let me just give you a quick listen what this filter sounds like. <laughs> What we're going to do is go to random LFO here. So let's pick the first one because it's empty. Set this to sample and hold. Set the tempo to the same rhythm as our pattern. So here, 16th notes. And let's apply this random LFO to the mix here of our filter. So I'm going to boost the amount of LFO first just to show you what it sounds like. <laughs> And you can see how randomly it changes the amount of the mix of our filter. And so this is gonna help us get small differences between each of the notes in our arm.
what I can also do is this form and transpose. I'm gonna just apply a random LFO to it as well. Let's start it around here and about this amount. Make sure to set it to sample and hold and 16th notes as well, just to add a bit more variation. And you can actually experiment with different uh, filters. So let me choose one of the phasing filters here. Let's say the positive one. So let's do the same thing. Apply this to the mix, reduce the mix, increase the LFO, make sure it's set to sample and hold. All right, let's give that a listen. <laughs> I really like that. So you can hear now how every note is slightly different. Maybe I could add another one here to the blend. Nice. And so that's another way you can use filters a bit more creatively. By the way, if you like the skin that I designed for Vital, you can grab it for free in the link down below. A third way you can use filters to make your melodies more human sounding is with key tracking. So if you've never used it, I'm gonna show you exactly what it does. So at the moment, we just have one oscillator feeding into filter one. And what I'm gonna do is feed this filter one into filter two. So I enable filter two and select the source filter one. And now this oscillator is going first through filter one and then filter two. What you might do if you wanna shape your sound is apply a filter. So, so let's say something like this. which sounds fine, but again, it's a bit too static. And if you want to add movement to your filter, all you have to do is enable key tracking. So what key tracking is actually doing is tracking the key that's being played. So following the keys on the keyboard and adjusting the filter based on that key. So if I just show you here and play a really low note versus a higher note, you can see how the filter is moving on each of those notes. And so that's a really easy way you can add a bit more movement to your melodies. I'm gonna switch it on and off and you'll immediately hear the difference. You can definitely hear how with key tracking enabled, those higher notes are coming through a lot better. In this case, the key tracking is rather subtle because our melody is restricted to a single octave. But if you had an ARP or a melody spanning an octave and a half or two octaves, this would be even more helpful because the filter will be moving along with your entire sequence. Finally, a last way you can use filters more creatively, and it's actually something that all the pros use, is on your effects and more specifically on your send effects. So here I have a vocal, which is routed to this channel here, and I have a reverb in parallel. So I'm sending an exact copy of the vocal to this track and then setting a reverb here to 100% wet. So this mixer track here only has a reverb. And what this allows me to do is then to process this reverb separately from the main vocal. So if I want to add saturation, if I want to add filtering, for example, I can do that on the reverb. And one thing the pros do all the time is to use filtering on their reverb and also their delays to give them their own space distinct from the main vocal. So let me show you here this reverb without any filtering on. So first, this is the dry vocal. And this is with the reverb. So it definitely sounds nice, but let's add some filtering to our reverb. So for this, I'm gonna use Ladder Filter by Kilohertz. It's a free plugin, so make sure to go and grab it. And if you don't know what a ladder filter is, it's basically a low pass filter modeled on actual hardware. So that's why you see transistor and diode here. Listen now to how the reverb sounds with this filter. Ew. 
wash in my hands You wash in my hands You wash in my hands and let's imagine you had two separate phrases like this. What you could do would be to automate the frequency cutoff between the phrases. So here I'm on ladder filter, play with the cutoff, right click here, create automation clip. And let me just increase it here. Maybe something like this. And this is a trick the pros use all the time with delay as well. So let me set up a parallel delay effect here. Please select the vocal, right click here, sidechain to this track, load up another 3D send and send it to delay. So for the delay, I'm gonna use, let's say Echo Boy. Make sure to set it to 100% wet because this is just our effect. Bring this down. So if we just leave it like this, our delay frequency wise is going to be an exact copy of the main vocal. Which is fine, but there's definitely some clash between the delay and the main vocal. And so what we can do is apply some filtering. Here in Echo Boy, you can do it directly with this low cut and high cut, or you can just load up your favorite EQ. And let's apply some filtering here to our delay. So I'm going to apply a low cut here and a high cut here. Let's do something like this. So here I'm just listening to the delay. So this type of curve is often called a telephone filter because it mimics uh, the effect of a phone, removing a lot of low end and some high end. We can still hear the delay, but we've given it its own space in the frequency spectrum. Instead of it overlapping with the main vocal, it has its own space now. And let's open up uh, the low-cut filter towards the end of the sentence. Nice. What I could do here is also automate the high cut filter so that it follows with the low cut filter. But this already gives you an idea of how you can use filters on your send effects. And that's it for this video on filters. I hope you found it useful and were inspired to try filters in new creative ways. Let me know in the comments down below how you like to use filters. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.